Hello. Um, my name is Naina, and I work as a tech lead in the infrastructure delivery team at the Financial Times. And um, one of the capabilities that my team works on is providing monitoring tools as a service to other teams in the FT. And there are three common questions that I get asked around monitoring. The first one being, why? Why should we monitor our systems? Or what are the benefits that me or my customers would actually get out of monitoring our systems and services? So the first reason is to be able to fix issues even before a customer notices. It's always good to go back to users saying we are aware of the problem and are working on it, rather than a blank, we're sorry about it, or even worse, we weren't aware of it. And the second reason is to be able to pin down problem areas quickly. Like, this is a dashboard of our operation status board, where there are a lot of tiles with green lines against them, which are all good services, but there are a few reds that need fixing. And the third reason is, monitoring can be an indication of how happy our customers are. And in the tech group I work in, one of the themes we work towards is being customer obsessed. And monitoring helps us to visualize and measure this. Um, the next kind of question that I get asked is, what should we monitor? Or I'm new to the team, and I'm not sure what criteria my team uses to monitor our systems and services. And how do I make sure I don't miss out on any important checks that are needed? When something goes wrong, we unconsciously go through a checklist. Monitoring is basically creating a checklist of things that we predict might go wrong, and this usually varies in team based on individuals' experience and knowledge that ha they've had from the prior uh, experiences. And hence, I prefer to tend to use uh, standard templates to help people with any level of experience come up with the same set of checks. And we have the use method, the red method, and the four golden signals that can help us with this. So according to use method, we create checks for utilization, saturation, and errors for every resource that our system needs. And um, however, these days, more teams are moving towards microservice and self-healing architecture, which means it's more important to monitor our services rather than our systems itself. And this is where the red method comes in handy, according to which we monitor the rate, error, and duration of every request that our service receives. However, these methods are not uh, alternative to each other, if we could run our systems at 100% utilization while still keeping our customers happy, that means we have built a cost-effective system. Uh, and there is an alternative to these, which is the Go Google's four golden signals, and the four signals are latency, traffic, saturation, and errors. And this is a combination of use and red method, and you could choose the one that fits your use cases the most. The last question that I get asked, and probably the hardest to answer, is what do we, how do we monitor? The landscape of tools that we've got for monitoring is like the background picture here, where I work in a team that does work with monitoring tools most days, and this intimidates me. And I think it would do to most of us. And hence, I usually tend to categorize monitoring tools into a few capabilities. The tools that you would see in the next few slides are just a few examples of the ones that we use at the FT, and I promise you no one's paid me for it. Um, so the first capability is log aggregation. For this, we need tools that collect logs from our systems and services that we can use to debug issues later. And Splunk, Elasticsearch, and Grafana Loki are a few examples. The second capability is uh, metric aggregation. For this, we need tools that collect metrics, like a value and a timestamp, and store that data. Graphite, Prometheus, and uh, AWS CloudWatch metrics are a few examples. Once we've got logs and metrics, we will want to visualize them with some pretty graphs and uh, analyze the data later. So this is the visualization capability. And we use Grafana, and Heimdall is our internal operation status board that one of my slides earlier had with loads of tiles. Uh, the next capability is basic health checks. Every service, irrespective of its criticality, needs to have this. And um, this is a simple check which says if your service is alive or not. And we use Pingdom and custom health check APIs to help us with this. And we're doing all these, so we actually get alerted when there are problems. Monitoring without alerts is like a wealthy person sitting on loads of money and not spending even on basic essentials. So we use Slack to help us notify when there are issues. And now that we've seen what, how, why we should monitor, what we should monitor, and how we could do it, I hope we've decoded monitoring together. Thank you.